Good afternoon, and welcome to the SaferSim webinar series. My name is Jacob Hyden, and I'm the program coordinator for SaferSim at the University of Iowa. SaferSim, or Safety Research Using Simulation, is a Tier 1 University Transportation Center with the research priority of promoting safety. And our webinar series features the research projects from within our center. So thank you for joining us today. There will be time at the end of the presentation for questions and discussion. So attendees can use their microphone or the chat box to participate. And feel free to use the chat box at any time throughout the presentation as well. If you do have a question or comment, um, we will hold those till the end during the Q&A though. Um, I do also want to mention that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared online after. And with that, um, today's presentation features a project from the University of Iowa, and I'm pleased to welcome our presenter, Ichin Ding. Ichin, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, John. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ichin Ding and a PhD candidate in the Department of uh, Business Analytics at the University of Iowa. And today I'm going to in present our research work, uh, collaborate with other researchers from the University of Iowa. And the topic is understanding bicycle list behavior through learning from big trip data. Okay. So first of all, let me introduce the background and the motivation of our work. Because cycling is an environmentally friendly transportation choice and at the same time can benefit our psychological and physical health, such as boosting our immune system and relieving stress, it has become increasingly, increasingly popular all over the world. And meanwhile, the traffic accidents involving cyclists are also increasing in recent years. And according to the report, we can see the road traffic crash is the first cause of death among the children and young adults. And also the eighth leading cause of death and more than half of the global, uh, half of the global traffic deaths are among pedestrian, motorcyclists and cyclists. So we think it is necessary to protect the cyclists. And uh, uh, to do that, we think it is uh, we have to understand what are the driving factors for cyclists to change their behavior and we decide to study and model the behavior at first and specifically we will conduct a multi-level study on cyclist behavior including first a, mic a micro level study on predicting the adult cyclist movement behavior through a deep learning solution and this work has already been published in Six Spatial 2020. And also a second project uh, from a micro level study on learning the children's cycling route solution, uh, selection through the spatial trajectory data mining. So first, uh, we will introduce the first project. So currently the rich data have been collected from the volunteers and in tradition, the researchers conduct analysis with handcrafted features, so which is not scalable to larger data sets. And furthermore, uh, these traditional analysis are based on human judgment of the same. So it might introduce some potential biases. And also recently, uh, various deep learning based methods have been proposed for behavior modeling. However, they all focus on the driver and pedestrian trajectory prediction. So, some of them uh, only use the spatial trajectories but without any visual input. And other will only use the videos with the fixed cameras. Only a few of them will use the uh, egocentric video data, also known as first person videos. So then I will also uh, introduce the challenge. In order to build a predictive model to understanding the, uh, the, cycle, uh, the behavior, cyclist behavior, uh, first, since the behavior of the road users are heavily influenced by the surrounding environment, including the traffic conditions, uh, road conditions, and the nearby vehicles, we need to analyze the object with semantic meanings instead of simply using the image pixels as input feature. So as we show here, instead of uh, using the image pixels, we may 
would like to extract uh, uh, semantic uh, objects meanings from the images. And second, the things in the in the first person data are complicated than those in the static cameras. So for variable cameras, like the cyclists or pedestrians, the things change more rapidly because the orientation of the camera might change. And for, for vehicle motor cameras, there are rapid dynamic changes of objects and background in driving scenario. So it is hard to tracking objects in such things and analyzing them much harder. And the third, well, the third challenge is uh, there are strong dynamic and uh, different spatial and temporal dependence in both the video contents and also the behaviors of a uh, road user along the path. And we should discover such spatial temporal pattern in the learning process. So before I elaborate our model, uh, I will demonstrate uh, how to model our cyclist behaviors from the data. Okay, so first, by combining the GPS trajectory data with the corresponding forward-facing videos, we will acquire the geo-referenced egocentric images data. Okay, so here is the example. As you can see, the red points indicating the GPS points, which correspond to the egocentric images with the same time step. And as you can see, uh, in this example, uh, when the cyclist approaches a stop sign in the view and the images may reflect the surrounding environment. However, without the image, we won't know a stop, uh, the cyclist is approaching a stop sign. So it is necessary to include in the images information. And given such data, we need to define the actions of cyclists based on their movements. So in other words, we will transfer each GPS trajectory into a sequence of the cyclist behavior. So here we take the point C as an example. So first uh, we will generate the speed related actions, uh, which is defined by the distance between AB and BC. And we will include in labels, uh, constant speeding, decelerating, accelerating, working and full stop. And for directional actions, uh, it was defined by the bearing uh, theta BC from the previous direction AB. Okay, so including the moving straightforward left turn and right turn. So all of these definitions can be tuned by different thresholds. And for the uh, detailed rules, uh, you can refer to our six spatials paper. And based on the behavior modeling, uh, we can formally formulate our behavior uh, prediction problem. And our goal is to predict the cyclist behavior in the next uh, a second based on his or her recent locations and the things around him or her. And the input will be the GPS coordinates and also the egocentric image metrics from the past big B T frames to current time step small t. And the output uh, will be either zero or one at current stage. So it means uh, if the cyclist moves forward with the constant speed, we will predict it as zero. Otherwise, we predict one. Okay. And the objective of this work is to minimize the difference between the two behavior label, uh, yt minus uh, t plus one, and the behave predicted behavior label, uh, hat yt plus one. And next, I'll introduce like how to extract the useful features from the data. So first, the mobility features, which are derived from the GPS data, we will convert the raw GPS coordinates into the pairs of bearing and distance values. And the benefit of doing this uh, is that the values of these uh, mirrors are bounded and less influenced by the ge geographic locations of of the trip. And besides, these mirrors are more meaningful to describe the behaviors. And second, we also extract the object features from the video frames, and we identify the objects around the cyclists. And those objects can reflect the road environment. And based on the domain knowledge, we will focus on eight categories, and their priority levels are shown in the left table. And besides, uh, here is an example uh, of the object features. So for each object, uh, we will use its category, overall score and bounding box to represent it. 
And the overall score here is derived by multiplying their confidence score and their priority levels. Okay. So in this way, based on this feature, we uh, we can propose our uh, first framework of the baseline. So for each egocentric images, uh, I, we will uh, we adopt a pre-trained Mars RCA model to detect the objects in the scene. And at each time step, we will order all identified objects by their overall score and selected top n objects. And as you can, as I mentioned before, for each object, we will uh, use a certain dimension vector to describe it. And then we will combine these object features with a two-dimensional mobility features and feed them into a standard LSTM to predict the cyclist behavior as Y hat. Okay. And in this training process, we compute the binary cross entropy loss for our prediction and adopt such earlier stopping criteria. And then because the objects in consecutive things might be in might be in different orders. So instead of top n identified objects, we will select top n tracking objects to combine with mobility features. So similar, we will still feed these combined features into a standard LSTM to predict the cyclist behavior. And in this way, we want to use the tracking object features to learn the relationships between the movements of these objects and the behavior of the cyclists. And to further improve our prediction, we pay attention to the different uh, underlying patterns of mobility features and the top n object features. So to implement this idea, we uh, propose a parallel LSTMs without the joint training. And specifically, one of the LSTMs will model the uh, movement of the top n objects around the cyclist, uh, while the other models the movement of the cyclist himself. And we will merge the output from the two sub LSTMs with a concatenate layer to jointly enforce the cyclist behavior. So in this way, we would like to capture the different underlying patterns of the mobility feature and the top end object features. And here is our uh, results. So as you can see here, we have uh, four groups and all the X axis indicating the same metrics in terms of the AUC, accuracy, f metal, record, and precision. So the group one will compare the performance of baseline and cycling one with top five object features. So as shown in figure one, we can see the cycling net performs significantly better than the baseline over all uh, met metrics except the precision. And particularly, the cycling net can balance the precision record trade-off better with higher f mirror. So similar to the group two. In group two, we compare the performance of the top five identified objects and tracking objects in cycling two framework. So similar to group one, it clearly shows that uh, tracking the objects features are more effective than identified object features. And for group three, it compares the performance of the top three and five objects in cycling net one framework. And in terms of all metrics, uh, incorporating top five objects features will always outperform top three objects. And in last group, group four, it compares the performance of cycling net one and two with top three objects. And in terms of the AUC and accuracy, the parallel LSTMs is significantly helpful in modeling moving patterns of cyclists and identified objects in the field of view. So in summary, our proposed cycling net can take advantage of top end tracking objects to help us better understand uh, the behavior of the cyclist. And besides, the parallel LSTM structure can help us to capture these patterns separately. And also, for future work, we may predict the multi-class behaviors based on more combinations of the actions. And for the social impact, our studies can help the transportation department to conduct more reliable cyclist behavior and learning the results and can improve the cycling safeties at the end.
And then I will briefly introduce our second project, like learning the children's cycling route selection through the spatial trajectory data mine. So as we all know, the good bicycling experience is important for child cyclists because they are less experienced and need more space for error. And therefore, a scientific assessment of the child bicyclist's perception of selected the road safety, comfort, and environment is necessary. So this project is motivated by the comparison between the child selected uh, routes and the Google shortest path. And as you can see in this figure, and we will assume that the changing biking environment will cause the behavior changes related to the routes choice. And based on this assumption, we address the child selecting routes selection prediction problem as giving a set of inputs on speed, like the speed limit or the traffic information, uh, also the safety information, uh, including the crash history and the safety scores uh, announced by the government and also the road conditions with the aim to predict the, the children road selection during a bicycling trip by learning from the existing ground truth data of their real world trips. So here is the framework. So first, we propose the method will use a first hand second by second children bicycle trajectory data <clears throat> collected using the GPS from the volunteer children cyclists. And according to the observation, we label the trajectory segments into two classes. So indicating if the children bicyclists follow the shortest path provided by Google or not. And we will generate the shortest path from the start and distant destination points extracted from the children's trajectory data and compare the path with the ground truth of their own choice. And then we will uh, also extract those segments where the shortest path and the ground truth diverge and incorporate related external features from these segments to make a prediction. So in this way, we can find if these features can significantly discriminate the shortest path and the children's biking path to improve the prediction accuracy. And uh, we will use a random forest, like a well-known classifier to predict the children's cyclist behavior. And the goal is to learn how these features uh, learned, uh, how these features uh, lead to the different route selections and predict if they prefer to choose the shortest path or the alternative safer route by giving a few, sec few seconds of the data. So in this project, uh, we demonstrate a one size fits all workflow for a child bicyclist behavior prediction problem and combine the GPS and the roadway character characteristic data. And the model is capable for a similar research for adult road selection study as well as other uh, study regions have similar data source. And in this project, we will utilize uh, random forests solution for predicting the child biking uh, road selection. And the difference between the children's choice and the tortoise path are employed to predict the, the road selection. So first, a uh, low cost map matching the method is uh, proposed to merge the spatial trajectory and contextual features quickly, effectively. And secondly, a data uh, enrichment idea is applied to allow more road selection samples to contribute to, pre uh, to the prediction and according to the continual nature of the study. And uh, thirdly, a random forest-based model is built to predict the road selection. And the results presented in this paper uh, demonstrate the feasibility of using this random forest to predict the selection with the promising results. And uh, we, we conclude that the lower speed the lower ADDT, like the annual average daily traffic and a smaller number of lanes are essential factors in children's biking road selections. So overall, um, in this project, we proposed uh, two frameworks, uh, one of them to a cycling net to learn the reliable cyclist behavior at the micro level. And the other is to learn the children's cyclist uh, road selection at a macro level. 
And uh, both of the results can inform the policy to road infrastructure and bike facilities to reduce the car bicycle crashes and also improve the cycling safety at the end. And also we hope our uh, proposed method can develop the guidance for urban planners, parents and schools in order to protect our child cycling. And finally, we thank to our funding agency, including the CIFRSIF, the NSF, and CDC, as well as the collaborators from the UI and the BPI. So uh, that's all for this presentation and open to your questions. And feel free to contact me or uh, uh, Bao, our, uh, our cooperator via our email address. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>